Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Thanks to the recent book by Graham Hancock, America Before, ancient North America has become a popular line of study and a growing interest for many. There is still a huge amount we do not know, and new excavations are bringing forth new finds all the time, that show that humanity has occupied this part of the world for many thousands of years. And if you believe the claims in my recent video on the Saruti Mastodon site, then human civilization in North America could be tens of thousands of years old. Chuck on the CF App 7865 channel has an incredible series of videos on ancient North America, where he details dozens of sites that many will never have heard of, including ancient mounds, pyramidal structures and more. I would urge you to visit his channel which is linked below in the description. Of course many of you will know that the famous Younger Dryas event greatly affected North America, I believe more than any other continent with a huge megafaunal extinction. As the Younger Dryas boundary layer, a sedimentary layer that records the event, is very deep in the earth in many parts of the continent, finding remains from before this time are very rare, and are usually only uncovered during new building projects with deep foundations. But what we are finding is that the people of ancient North America were more sophisticated than many people used to think, and arguably the most famous monument in this part of the world, known as the Great Serpent Mound, is evidence of such sophisticated knowledge. The rest of this video is one that I created around two years ago, but with very little views because my channel was somewhat small back then, and as this video is now lost in a multitude of videos on the subject of lost ancient civilizations, I do believe it deserves to be republished to reach a larger audience. Chuck from the CF App 7865 channel did comment back on the original video, saying, There was a culture who put these snake effigies all over the ancient US. The alignments I question, just because with something with so many curves, you could find an alignment with anything. So that's something to bear in mind, and I'd love to hear your thoughts, so please do comment below. The Great Serpent of America is a 1,348 foot long, 3 foot high prehistoric effigy mound, located in Ohio, North America. It has been designated a National Historic Landmark by the US Department of Interior and is one of the most mysterious monuments in North America. It is the largest serpent effigy in the world, and was first reported from surveys published in the 1848 book Ancient Monuments of the Mississippi Valley. Carbon dating at the site conducted in 2014 has dated it to around 300 BC, suggesting it was built during the Adena period. The serpent conforms to the curve of the land on which it rests, with its head approaching a cliff above a stream. It winds back and forth for more than 800 feet, and is composed of seven coils, ending in a triple coiled tail. The shape itself consists mostly of a layer of yellowish clay and ash, that was reinforced with a layer of rock, and then covered with a layer of soil. The serpent head has a wide open mouth, extending around the east end of a 120 foot long hollow oval feature, which some believe portrays the snake eating an egg, whilst others believe the oval is in fact representing the sun. Although radiocarbon dating has been conducted, the identity of the builders, the dating of the original design and the original layout of the construction are all debated. The evidence for it being an Adena site is relatively slim, with just a couple of carbon dates from a small excavation that placed it around 300 BC. But people of that age in the Ohio Valley were not known for building large earthworks, even though they did hold snakes in high regard, as shown by the numerous copper serpentine pieces associated with them. But what is the Serpent Mound portraying? Like every mysterious ancient site, there are a variety of theories. Nearby Adena period graves lead some people to believe the earthwork served a mortuary function, and that was the principal nature of this site, directing spirits of the dead from burial mounds and subsurface graves northward, not a place to conduct large ceremonial gatherings as tourist boards suggest. In 1987, Clark and Marjorie Hardman published their findings that the oval to head area of the serpent is actually aligned to the summer solstice sunset. 
William F. Romain has also suggested an array of lunar alignments based on the curves and the effigy's body. Researchers Fletcher and Cameron also convincingly argued that the serpent mound coils were aligned to the two solstice and two equinox events every year. So, far from being just a simple ceremonial centre or a site of esoteric rituals for the dead, if the serpent mound was designed in such a way to mark both lunar and solar events, it would have high importance, a monument that consolidates a huge amount of astronomical knowledge into one enormous symbol. Interestingly, the mound is located on the site of a five mile wide ancient meteorite impact structure. In its center, the sedimentary rock has been uplifted several hundred feet, similar to what we see on moon craters such as the famous Copernicus. Core samples from the site have been analyzed and experts from the University of Glasgow date the impact event to around 250 million years ago. Even though much of the topographic expression of the impact has been lost, it is one of the few ancient impact structures known in North America. But did the ancient Americans know this, or is it a mere coincidence that an astronomically aligned structure was built here? One of the Earth's rarest elements, iridium, which is strongly associated with impact events, can be found at the site in abundance. But as there appears to be no other elements associated with impact events, some researchers, such as Mike Hansen, a retired geologist from Ohio, thinks that natural shifts in the Earth's crust cause the geological features. Around the time of the rock's formation, according to Hansen, Africa was pushing into North America, a major tectonic event that would have created the geological chaos seen today in the area. Either way, the Serpent Mound's astronomical alignments cannot be questioned. Researcher Ross Hamilton has gone a stage further, and has found out that as well as solar and lunar alignments, the shape of the structure fits the constellation Draco with fair precision, with the ancient pole star, Thuban or Alpha Draconis, at its geographical centre sitting within the first of the seven coils from the head. Along the length of the serpent mound, every star of the Draco constellation falls on the mound, apart from one, the pole star, Thuban. Taking a steel compass and map of the mound, Hamilton drew a perfect circle with Thuban at the centre and the outer edge of the coiled tail as the perimeter, and he found that the entire monument was encompassed inside this circle. It neatly encompasses both the triangular mound in front of the sun egg that the serpent is devouring and the outermost spiral of the coiled tail. As Thuban was the centre of the circle created by the serpent mound, Hamilton believes that the mound was designed to refer to the epoch during which Thuban was the pole star, the centre of the night sky mirrored on the ground. Based on the changing position of Draco in the night sky and calculations based on the precession of the equinoxes, Hamilton has pushed the date of the earthwork back to approximately 3000 BC. This, of course, is at odds with archaeological dating methods, but interestingly, archaeologists did produce one radiocarbon date of 1000 BC, too late for Thuban being the pole star, but certainly earlier than mainstream archaeological interpretation. So, if the astronomical alignments are not coincidental, was the monument built in 3000 BC when Thuban was the pole star, or was it constructed by a later culture to commemorate the time before? Did the later cultures simply adapt this more ancient structure? Whatever the truth, there is one more incredible observation by Hamilton that indicates the builders of the Great Serpent Mound had advanced mathematical and astronomical knowledge. Look at this picture of the Great Circle of Procession. When you overlay the Serpent Mound onto this circle, lining up the stars of Draco, as mentioned previously, the centre of this processional circle lines up with the coiled tail of the Great Serpent Mound. Another coincidence? Or does this therefore show us that the builders encoded the processional cycle into the Serpent Mound by building a spiral in exactly the right place? I think so, and I think that this is advanced knowledge of the heavens, and an astonishing discovery by Hamilton. The coiled tail is designed perfectly to imply a spiralling motion and the direction of the tail's coil implies a serpent emerging from the centre point of the coil in a counterclockwise direction, the same direction that the celestial north pole moves around the centre of the processional ring. 
Researchers of the ancient world often bypass ancient North America in favour of cultures involving more impressive megalithic monuments. But as the Great Serpent Mound shows, this part of the world was just as advanced as any other in ancient times, and I'm sure many more secrets are just waiting to be discovered. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.